Hello everyone, welcome. So um, last period, last week we have been studying about Listeria and Salmonella uh, microbes. So uh, this week we will study a totally whole new two microbes that will be reviewed later in this video. But first, uh, we need to take a look at the questions, answers and explanations for the 20 questions that we have been studying with um, Kahoot last week. So the first question is, Listeria monocytogenes is a microbe commonly found in the environment that pose no health risk. So the answer is false. Listeria is a common environment, environmental microbe that can pose health risk. That's why we study about this and that's why it's important in the food industry. Number two, Listeria mono, mono uh, cytogenes has been found in dairy products, meat, plants, and water, natural water. Yes, they are detected in all of those scenarios. Number three, Listeria is not affected by heat treatment and can thrive in cold storage temperature. So the answer is false and this one I made it wrong Listeria is destroyed by heat treatment but preventing post heat treatment contamination is crucial still so you need to uh, grow it uh, at cold temperature or store it in a uh, like cold change and uh, remember Listeria can be destroyed by cooking like at the heat treatment so number four Salmonella is a type of plant-based microbe. It's not a plant-based. It uh, it goes to humans, so it's not plant. Number five, diseases that affect both animals and humans are known as zoonosis. It refers as zoonosis, yes. So both animals and humans are zoonosis. Remember that. Number six, salmonella infection can only cause diarrhea. Uh, it's false. It many uh, symptoms here, like for example, abdominal pain, diarrhea, flatulence, nausea, and fever. And this fever is ex uh, extremely important because fever can lead to other uh, kind of um, consequences. Number seven, uh, personal hygiene is not important in preventing the spread of salmonella. Even personal hygiene is very essential, but it's not like um, uh, <coughs> it's uh, it's very. I mean, it's very like uh, important in preventing the salmonella. So um, every time that you need to cook or to do something that related to food, you have to clean your hands uh, the, like or the surfaces that are in contact with the food number eight all individuals uh, infected with salmonella experience symptoms uh, it says here that it's false because not all individual affect with the uh, salmonella can have symptoms so sometimes it uh, asym asymptomatic can be unknowing can be unknown uh, to be like the, the spread of the bacteria. Number nine, asymptomatic carrier of salmonella cannot transmit the bacteria to others. It can be uh, because sometimes you don't even know like if you get the salmonella or not. So uh, when you um, are in food industry, always even though you are healthy, you look healthy, they ask you to... Um, Check the salmonella test. Number 10, providing a salmonella sample is unnecessary. Unnecessary here. After returning a trip from outside of Nordic countries, it's false. Every time you go outside of Nordic countries, you have to give a salmonella test. And it's really strict here. Every time you go outside of for example, you go to Tallinn, you go to mm, like Lithuania, go to Germany, 
anywhere outside of except for Finland, except for um, uh, Norway or Sweden or Denmark, then you have to um, take a salmonella test. Number 11, both Finland and Sweden have state-controlled salmonella monitoring program for food products imported from other EU countries. Yes, they have this. So that is why uh, they have very good salmonella situation. And that's why they have really strict um, like policy when you come from outside of Finland and Sweden. Number 12, salmonella can survive high temperature cooking. Uh, no, can be destroyed by high temperature cooking. So you need to remember this. Both of the bacteria can can be destroyed by by heat treatment. Number thirteen, listeria, listeria is not affected by the temperature and can survive in the cold storage. So we already learned about this. It can be destroyed by heat but still grow in cold storage. Listeria is a rare microbe that is not commonly found in various environment. Can be found in various environment. It's everywhere. So you, it's not a rare thing. So that's why we study about it. If it's rare, then people really don't don't really care about that that much. Um, number fifteen, Salmonella only affects human and has no impact on animals it's zoonosis so remember zoonosis can both animals and human so anytime that you pet some like dogs or cats or any type of pets that you that you actually uh, like caring about you um, you need to be careful and uh, bear because bear eats salmon a lot uh, they are like also a type of um, animal that get salmonella uh, a lot. Number 16, salmonella symptom includes loss of appetite and fatigue. No, it's not like losing the appetite and fatigue. It's caused the pain, diarrhea and fever. Remember this, this is a common symptom. And we have no 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 way to learn it by remembering it. And of course, the easier way is to go to the doctor and take a sample test of like 50, 60 euros and then you will have the thing. But of course, we need to know the symptoms. Like maybe it's there, maybe it's not. Number 17, personal hygiene is important for preventing the spread of both Listeria and salmonella, yes, of course. Number 18, asymptomatic carrier of salmonella cannot transmit the bacteria to others. So it's false. We study about this also. A sample for salmonella testing is required after a trip outside of Nordic for individuals. So... Even though it's really important, but if you do not handle like food, then you don't need to remember. Like it's not like for all individual, but all individuals that will handle foods, that will make foods or handling unpacked food. So remember this. Yes, this is a very, very tricky question because not all. If you don't make food, if you work in like environment that is uh, like no food, no, no, you're not making food for others, so you don't need to. Of course, why, why would you, for example, you travel to Germany, you travel to uh, Baltic countries, and then when you go home, like the uh migration control they, they ask you hey, yes stop now and make a salmonella test no 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 only when you handle food especially for people who work in restaurant and and like um like handling food for people number 20 finland and sweden have state control salmonella monitoring program for food products imported from other eu countries due to poor salmonella situation no they have good salmonella situation that's why they 
monitoring others. If you are good, you will monitoring others because you are not sure if uh, the countries that are, have like um, good um, like way of handling the situation. So both F Finland and Sweden have this really good situation here. Yes, that's all for the review. And of course, now we will move to learn about um, this uh, Campylobacter and uh, E. coli. E. coli is, um, they have various of, um, like, um, how to say, they have various types of E. coli, but this type of E. coli will be harmful for people in food industry. And before we go through the questions, we will maybe, it's essential for us to take a look at the definition of both of the bacteria because I believe that uh, maybe for some of you this is the first time that you encounter th this name so uh, we will look at take a look at here a few moments later hello everyone so um, let's start to our lessons about Campylobacter and EHEC and there are, there are two types of this um, uh, bacteria are commonly found, so we, we need to learn about this. Capylobacter is commonly found in beef and lamb, but not in poultry. I think beef and lamb are animals, so it's false. Yes, so can found in animals. Campylobacter symptoms typically appear within 24 hours of infection one day. This I don't know. Maybe. No. Okay. I don't know about this, so we, we will see the explanation of it. Campylobacter infection primarily causes vomiting. Okay. No. Wow. Campylobacter symptoms usually resolve within a day. I don't think it's in a day because if it's in a day, then it's not dangerous at all. So I think it's false. Yeah. Reactive arthritis is commonly long-term effect of Capylobacter infection. What is this? But it's long-term effect. I think maybe it's true. Yeah. We will learn about that later in the explanation. Campylobacter can only be contracted from improper cooked food. Maybe. But here they say only be. So not only, I don't think so. So it's false. Yeah. Somehow, if we don't know about the meaning of the question, we just look, take a look at the sentence and we can find it. Adequate cooking can completely eliminate the risk of Campylobacter from food. Completely. I don't think it's completely. Yeah. Number eight. Campylobacter cannot be transmitted from person to person. Wow. I think it's, it's false. Yeah. It can transmit between humans. E. coli is a common strain of E. coli found in the human intestine. Common. As we read about the um, definition, it's like kind of rare thing, so it's false. Yeah. Infections, this infection typically leads, leads to respiratory symptoms like related to your breathing uh, situation. Like, can you breathe or not? So, I think it's true. No, okay. 11. EHEC symptom appear immediately upon the infection I don't think it's immediately yeah of course 
it's not immediate it's not like poison it's that this affection can result in kidney complication in some cases in some cases so it it sounds right to me yeah it is a common strain of equally present in many food products no it's not common it's, it's kind of rare Proper cooking is sufficient to eliminate the risk of AHEC infection from food. I don't think so. I don't think so. Like only cooking. Yeah. So we will learn like how they will eliminate it later next week. AHEC is primarily transmitted through person to person contact. Primarily. I believe so. I believe so. No. Okay. Okay. Good personal hygiene has no impact. Has no impact. Uh, no. It maybe it helps. Yeah. Always when washing your hands and stuff. Reactive arthr arthritis is commonly long-term effect of EHEC infection. It was the effect, long-term effect of can be of the previous like um, microbe, so it's false. Yeah, below bacteria. Yeah, E H E C is commonly found in household pet. Wow, from pet. Let's see. It's true. No, not from pet. Okay, so it's from human. Typically lasts for a few hours. No, if it lasts for a few hours, then why you need to learn about it, you know? It has some effects there. Can only be contracted from person to person contact. Can only be, I think it's false. It's from like a lot of like means of like transmitting. So yeah. That are the 20 questions that we learned from today. And next week, we will review the reason behind of each question, why it is true and why it is false. And thank you so much for being here today. And 